Let's bring in David Bonson, founder and managing partner of the Bonson Group. So I love my colleagues, but they always tell me I care way too much about the Federal Reserve. You do. I do. I thought I you were going to say bonds. <laughs> and bonds. And um, but what do you make of that? Because it does, you know, Federal Reserve sets interest rate policy that we pay, that small businesses pay. What do you make of that interview? Uh, Taylor, you should be commended for caring a lot about Fed policy. Uh, by the way, my kids say the same thing to me. Uh, <laughs> listen. Um, when she's saying 3% is the neutral rate, you have to wonder how anyone knows what the neutral rate is. But let's just assume she's right. That means any rate they're at above 3, which is another 150 basis points on the way down, they consider to be tightening. Wow. So they can be cutting rates and still tight because they think that they are basically in a tight position above a neutral rate. So they're telling you they're going to keep cutting. What do you think of the Truth Social post over the weekend where he's talking about the president-elect of BRICS countries, he's saying he'll impose 100 percent tariffs if they go to do anything to unseed the dollar um, as, as the world's basically main currency. Your thoughts? Well, I'm not going to be critical of President Trump here because I don't believe he means it. I think it's a really effective kind of posturing. Um, the dollar is in our hands, 100 percent. Anybody who wants to get off of the dollar can only do it because we're doing something dumb. It's right now the strongest currency in the world. Our fiscal policy, our monetary policy are what jeopardized the dollar. Not anything Brazil, Russia. I mean, these are third world gangster countries are going to derail the dollar. It's ridiculous. But you got you got like. OK, so you got those guys, but you got like 20 countries kind of on the periphery. And yeah, those are the strong this, ones I was right, talking about. And, well, and, and they're looking at this. So, I mean, you've got these four years of kind of our adversaries aligning with each other. Is this mm -hmm. one of these moves where you say, just get off the train now, get off the BRICS train now? Right. They're not a competitor, but don't even think about becoming one at some point in the future. Yeah. The problem there is you want countries to operate in their best economic interest and us to operate in ours. And then where possible trading partners for that to be together. That's the idea to have allies. Um, look, it's not about reserve currency that he's talking about. He's talking about them trading. They still have to com convert back into dollars. Nobody is going to buy oil with a different currency and then keep it in a third world currency. It's not going to happen. They have to convert back to dollar as a kind of safe harbor. That's what all countries with excess reserves do is hold it in dollars. Mm. That's not going to change. But he has other agenda items he's positioning for. And I have to think they have a strategy. And I do agree. This that we we hold in our hands yeah. good economic policy is what ultimately affects the, but the, the last four years we kind of had some bad economic policy That's which true. might lead some of these bad actors to think that they could get gain some interest. okay but here's the thing we have had crazy monetary policy for 15 years meaning very experimental right and right. that has done nothing to change the dollar's reserve status. And there is no other, the European Union, the yen, um, they're all behaving far more crazy. So it isn't something that has to jeopardize it. We have to control our debt and we have That's to continue good. to be a reliable trading partner and the dollar right. will be the reserve currency. Um, quickly, I think the big stock news over the weekend was Pat Gelsinger, who I think we think is a pretty incredible CEO, is a wonderful business leader and a visionary, came back to Intel in 2021. We're hearing over the weekend was ousted by the board. Yeah. Is there anything Intel could do? And you actually have a few seconds to answer this that would make you buy Intel. Uh, it would take a lot of years and they'd have to become a consistent dividend grower again. And that's not going to happen anytime soon. Mm. Pat inherited a very bad situation. There was nothing he could do. And uh, they have a big, big challenge in front of mm. them. David Bonson, no challenges for you. It's always great to have you here. Thank you. <laughs> Good, Good to see you. you.